breaking news this morning. Authorities in the UK are investigating a terror attack this morning. This after a suicide bomber kills 22 and injures dozens more at an Ariana Grande concert. We begin with breaking news this morning. Former Fox News president and CEO Roger Ailes has died. Ailes is most known for building Fox News into a cable television powerhouse. Recently, though, the company has been under fire for cases of sexual harassment charged by former employees. Ailes left Fox News under the scandal last July. He was 77 years old. Lawmakers are back in session and we're continuing our coverage on the state budget crisis this morning. For the first time in nearly two years, a budget plan passes through the state Senate. Welcome to WMBD this morning. Even though it's summer vacation, some positive news for Peoria Public School students. One of the nation's largest banks awarding the district a $19,000 grant. The details coming up. From our Capitol newsroom, you can expect state lawmakers to be in Springfield over the summer after they fail once again to pass a budget before the deadline. House Speaker Michael Madigan says there will be a continuous session resuming in June. Governor Rauner says Democrats made, quote, Same phony attempts at making real reforms. Democrats argue if Rauner doesn't agree, he should join them at the negotiating table. A budget hearing will be held in Chicago on June 8th. Welcome to WMBD this morning. One of Illinois' gubernatorial candidates is making a stop in Peoria today. Malls across the country are evolving just like shoppers' habits. The Northwoods Mall in Peoria is welcoming a new anchor store, and it's not a traditional department store. It's an entertainment center. As I found out, providing an experience could be the key to keeping visitors coming back to the mall. Macy's is out, and Round One Entertainment is moving in. I'm Lindsay Mills at the Northwoods Mall with more on how the mall is evolving to keep up with shoppers' changing habits. A portion of Route 78 will be named after Sergeant Douglas Riney, who was killed in Afghanistan last year. Clay, this is the story here. Brick by brick, these businesses are going to have to rebuild, but it's the debris, debris like this, that's really telling the story. Two students from Illinois competing in that national spelling bee. One of them is Eleanor Fournier of Canton. It's really amazing. They're doing, they're spelling some words I could not spell on yeah. my own without my friend Google. Illinois Democrats are responding to the latest Congressional Budget Office report on the American Health Care Act. President Trump is scheduled to attend his first NATO summit today as he's nearing the end of his nine day foreign trip to the Middle East and Europe. Henna Daniels has the latest. A bill on Governor Rauner's desk could bring more development to Peoria's warehouse district. If signed, the bill would extend historic tax credits for River Edge communities over the next five years. They've helped seven downtown development projects so far, but were set to expire this December. Leaders say the extension might help get more developers involved in the warehouse district and tackle larger projects. After today's NATO meetings, President Trump and the First Lady head to Italy for this year's G7 summit. Meanwhile, leaders in Peoria Public Schools are thinking about possible changes once Caterpillar's leaders head north. Friday morning live time, Peoria's best comedians are taking the stage at the Jukebox Comedy Club this weekend. Joe Roderick, one of them. Start with your right leg, Kay. right foot. You're going to shuffle. Nope, that's no, a scrape. That's a scrape. Shuffle is when you like kind of make two two touches with the ball of your foot. Yep, yes, very okay. good. Okay. Yes. Now we're gonna try the left leg. Okay. Shuffle. Over here. Yeah. <laughs> Continuing to follow breaking news this afternoon, we're learning more on the big announcement from a central Illinois company that has deep roots in the area. Caterpillar will be moving its global headquarters from here in Peoria to Chicago. Our team coverage starts right now, and we are covering all the angles of what this move means for Peoria and the central Illinois area. That includes the newest information from the company's CEO, how this will affect local businesses, and the financial implications this has right now in the stock market. We start with our Clay Gordon, who is live outside Caterpillar headquarters. Clay, why is this move so historic? Clay, thank you so much for that. We'll hear again from you in just a bit, and we continue our team coverage right now with Alyssa Paldo, who spoke with Caterpillar authorities this morning. Alyssa, what are we learning this afternoon? Back to you, Lindsay. Hannah Hilliard with reaction from the community this morning. Thank you so much for that. And now we're going to check back in with Clay Gordon, who is live with financial advisor Scott Maybe to see how those markets are reacting to this news of Caterpillar's headquarters uh, relocating this morning. We learned that they will be relocating from 
from Peoria to Chicago. Clay, uh, what is Scott maybe letting us know at this hour about the markets? Local lawmakers say while they are pleased to see a balanced budget, there are some concerns with the cuts. Right now, a winter weather advisory is in effect for central Illinois. Yeah, we couldn't escape the snow mm -mm. even late in the season. Yep. And this morning's weather making for a tough mute in some areas. Last night's flurries are causing slick conditions on the roadway. Eugene Daniel is in the mobile storm tracker getting the latest. Eugene, how's it looking out there? Malls across the country are evolving just like shoppers habits. The Northwoods Mall in Peoria is welcoming a new anchor store and it's not a traditional department store. It's an entertainment center. As I found out, providing an experience could be the key to keeping visitors coming back to the mall. Peoria's Northwoods Mall was no exception when Macy's closed locations nationwide. According to a recent report in the Wall Street Journal, a study by Wells Fargo Securities shows the closure of an anchor store like Macy's is a common hallmark of a dead or dying mall. Peoria City Manager Patrick Urick says there is no doubt online shopping is competing with the local mall. And what we've also seen as a, as a um, state in Illinois locally is that while our um, state was very reliant on goods 50 years ago. Now we're very reliant on services. How we shop is changing along with what we're paying for. In 1965 in the state of Illinois, 51% of the economy was based on services and 41% of the economy was based on the selling of goods. By 2012, those numbers had changed drastically. Now almost 72% of the economy is service-based and 17% is goods. And when local communities base their sales tax revenues on the sale of goods, that puts some pressure on them. Eurek says municipalities like Peoria will have to look at other revenue sources and the mall needs to pivot. So what's a mall to do in this changing climate? Maybe the answer is quite literal. If it will play in Peoria, it's time to get playing. Round One Entertainment is just a complete entertainment center. Northwoods Mall's marketing director, Bob Schertz, says Macy's closure in 2016 created an opportunity for the mall. Round One Entertainment will take up one floor of the former anchor store. Kids play zone state-of-the-art arcade, karaoke, just a wealth of things for families. Schertz has seen them all change in his last three decades with the Washington Prime Group property. He says even though Round One is not a department store, it will be considered an anchor store. The term anchor is evolving. Um, it is more uh, entertainment now. Uh, malls are trying to bring entertainment in, giving, giving a more complete shopping experience for people. Sturt says there are 7 million shopper visits to the Northwoods Mall each year, and the holiday season remains the busiest despite the rise of online shopping. And it's, it's social. You know, people like to come here with their families and get out and, and shop. Um, you know, and it, when you're shopping online, you lose that experience. You know, you don't see the things, the, the decor, you don't see Santa Claus, you don't see the things at the holidays that you would see online. Whether it's the holidays or a Friday night at Round One Entertainment, pretty soon shoppers could be taking both merchandise and memories home from the mall. And still no word on what will fill the second level where Macy's once was. Round one is scheduled to open late fall, early winter of this year. Man's best friend, dogs can be trained to help us in so many ways, even in life-saving situations. There's one pack of pups here in central Illinois training to become therapy dogs, and most of them needed to be saved themselves. It's all happening in a place you would least expect. Hard to tell who's walking whom. It's day one for this seven-week-old German Shepherd training to become a therapy dog with Latonia Jones or Tony. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, her name is Wrigley. She's named after the Cubs, Wrigley Field. I just got her yesterday. They're part of a program called Helping Paws, and newcomers like Wrigley and her sister Tracker will be here for the next year or so. Good boy. Yes. All the training happens inside the Logan Correctional Center in Lincoln. Melissa Mooney has been in charge of the program for five years. Well, the dogs live with our offenders 24 hours a day. They actually live in their rooms with them. They have a kennel, um, and they're responsible for all of their care. So they feed them, they groom them, and then they train them. And they don't just train them Monday through Friday. The training has to be seven days a week. Girl, Charlie. Good girl, Mama. To participate, inmates must get their GED and go through 40 hours of training, among other things. Pause giving independence in Peoria provides some of the dogs from shelters and rescues. Thank the boy stay. They learn how to help in life-saving situations. Yes. 
like grabbing an inhaler during an asthma attack. Big trash. Or with daily duties. Yes, good girl. Experts already in delivering unconditional love and providing a sense of purpose. I thought I had it together before. <laughs> I did. I thought I was okay. You know, I thought I had it together. Even though I'm here, I thought I was had it together. You know, but now I'm like, dang, I'm worth a lot more. Upon release, inmates receive a certificate from the Department of Labor to help in the job search. The pops are eventually matched with a recipient, leaving behind paw prints on hearts and this wall of fame. Doing my time like this has been so much helpful for me, especially in this environment. To for when I leave, um, to be able to go back out there and do something that I'm passionate about. For now, Wrigley will only know life behind the fence. She's one lucky dog, though, for Tony, a future recipient, and perhaps the Cubs. Helping Paws is an Illinois Correctional Industries program known as ICI. The money for this particular program comes from items that ICI sells back to the public. They make furniture, they do milk and meat processing and printing work. Mooney says Helping Paws does not take any tax money or any money from outside or from the state rather outside of ICI.